Hi everyone, we're the birds and our topic is on parental care. The evolution of parental care. Parental care is any behavioral pattern in which a parent invests time or energy in feeding and protecting its offspring. Among the species, parental behavior differs in three categories. There's biparental, the norm mostly in birds. Usually the male is responsible for food and the female stays by the nest to nurture and protect the offspring. Then there's uniparental, mostly in mammals where the female usually takes care of the offspring. Only on rare occasion does a male undertake such a responsibility. For example, nest building and provisioning brood cells is strictly the province of female digger bees, whereas a male is nowhere to be found. And then there's non-parental. In great many animal species, neither the mother nor the father lift a finger to take care of their progeny. Cost-benefit analysis. To better understand the diversity in parental behavior among these species, one needs to analyze a cost-benefit approach of behavioral ecology. Let's take songbird parenting, for example. Although both parents take the initiatives of bringing food to their helpless bunch that were left behind, they also consider the cost-benefit by adjusting the frequency of their visit to the nest. By making these trips to their nest, the parents increase the survival chances of their young birds, but at the same time they subject themselves to more risks of predation. Cameron Gallenberg and Tom Martin hypothesized that two key factors were necessary for the adult birds to adjust their parenting behaviors. One, the nature of the predator, and two, annual mortality rate for the breeding adults. They experimented with North American birds, the robins, and South American birds, the thrushes, by exposing these birds to nestling predators and adult predators. Gallimber and Martin already knew that North American breeds have longer lifespan and larger clutch eggs than their counterparts from South America. When both birds were exposed to nestling predators, the robins of South America were found to pay more visits to their nests than the thrushes of the north. When presented to adult predators, more visits were recorded by the thrushes. Why does maternal care exceed paternal care? Is it too much time and energy invested by the female in laying eggs and mating? Sicilian mother lets her youngsters strip off her lipid-rich body in order to feed them. The maternal sacrifices of the tree hoppers where they alone stand day and night to watch over their youngsters and protect them against predators and parasitic insects. The females have special incentive to make sure their large initial gametic investment is not wasted. According to Chung Ping Li and his colleagues, in some of these species from the tree hopper subfamily, parental care has never evolved. Maternal care is not favored all the time. One might be quick to predict that because the mother has so much invested in laying the egg, she is more prone than the father to come to the aid of her offspring. However, the females of other spe species, such as fish, have no problem of leaving behind their eggs, which should be costly to them under the care of their male partners. David Queller believes that if the cost of parental care is lower for the females than the males, then it could be expected that the females will provide more care than the males. Why is there any male parental care? Is it to attract females to mate with them? Is it to protect their offspring from predators? Perhaps one could argue that because male fish are full of sperm, taking time to cover more territory and produce more offspring would be of a greater importance to them than parental care. Such an argument would only stick in a system where females are more attracted to the parental committed, egg guarding males. For example, stickleback males tend to carry up to 10 clutches of eggs over two weeks in one nest. In contrast, during that period, the females can produce about seven clutches and guard her eggs without taking time off. Therefore, parenting seems less advantageous for the female stickleback than the male. Furthermore, although the parental males tend to grow slower than they would otherwise, the decrease on their growth is not an exclusive factor that negatively affects their mating attractions. Why do male water bugs do all the work? The evolution of paternal care most likely evolved from non-paternal ancestors. It is also common among some harvest insects. At times, the male spends months standing near the eggs that were laid on the underside of leaves. Parental care has greater fitness costs for females than for males. Males with the clutch of eggs may sometimes attract a second female due to capacity of parental care. 
During a male removal experiment that lasted 12 days, clutches, were left, clutches left unattended were immediately attacked. While half of the control clutches protected by guarding males were fully recovered, Furthermore, in some other genera, such as Abydus and Bellostoma, some female bugs were allowed to lay their eggs directly upon the back of the male. The brooding male would then spend hours navigating near the water surface, keeping well aerated water moving over the eggs. In this study, clutches that were left unattended by the males would not develop, suggesting that male parenting is essential in the case of these bugs. So why adopt genetic strangers? There is a risk of making a mistake by not feeding or even attacking one's own offspring. To avoid harming a genetic offspring, sometimes adoption of genetic strangers occurs. For example, ground nesting adult gulls will adopt chicks that beg for food confidently. Bull chicks will often leave the nest if their biological parents fail to feed them. If adopted, these gold chicks will have a higher chance of survival than if they had remained with the biological parents. Adopted chicks generally have a higher quality of life than chicks that do not get adopted. The Warbler and Cowbird Experiment Hoover and Robinson did a study on warblers and the parasitism of a cowbird. Nests were divided into three categories. The cowbird egg was removed but the nest opening was left as it was. The cowbird egg was not touched, and the nest entrance was not modified. And finally, the cowbird egg was removed, and the nest entrance was made smaller. The results were, when the cowbird egg was removed, often the nest was visited by an avian predator. Or when the parasite's egg was not ejected by the experimenters, the warbler's eggs were less likely to disappear. And finally, when cowbirds were prevented from revisiting nests that they had parasitized, the loss of warbler eggs did not occur. The results show that, that cowbird females come back to the nests they have parasitized. So why accept a parasite's egg? Parent birds that made incubation of eggs dependent on their learned recognition of the egg they had laid might sometimes abandon or destroy their own eggs by mistake. Killer siblings. Siblicide is the killing of a sibling or siblings, a behavior pattern found in various animal groups. This behavior may have evolved due to a fitness advantage enjoyed by one offspring over the other. Competition for food is the main driver of siblicide. For example, masked booby chicks take part in early siblicide with little to no intervention by the parents. Blue footed booby parents, on the other hand, and are intervention prompt. When masked booby chicks were placed in a blue-footed booby parented nest, siblicide in the masked booby chicks declined. When blue-footed booby chicks were placed in a masked booby chick parented nest, siblicide in the blue-footed booby chicks increased. This study concludes that parental interference does have an effect on siblicide. That is it for this video lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it.